Hey, welcome to The Closing Beat. Happy, happy Monday. Hope you're having a great day here today. Welcome to our show. This is just a quick show that we do called The Closing Beat. It's a stock market update. We cover the good, the bad, and the ugly for the day. And then we take your questions if you happen to have any questions. We're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Hope you keep us in mind for your Roth IRAs, 401k rollovers, things like that. If you find you need help with that or want someone to help take over and teach you along the way, we are uh, happy to help you with that, jazzwealth.com. Uh, speaking of teaching, we have got an incredible class coming up this week, and I only know it because it's just the more and more effort we seem to be putting into this. Um, when is the best day of the week to invest? If you had to pick one day, if you're gonna invest weekly, does that beat the monthly investors, the guys that put in like, you know, first of the month, you just put in, you know, whatever you invest in your, you know, uh, Roth IRA or whatever, or is it better to do it like every Tuesday and break it down into smaller numbers? We're gonna go over over 20 years worth of data with every single price in the markets there to kind of cover where you stand there. And I actually don't know how it's going to pan out just yet because we actually went in and said, let's take it even further and say, well, if Monday was a holiday, then let's pretend you invested on the next Tuesday. So if you chose, let me invest every Monday in the morning, but the Monday was an actual stock market holiday, we, trans we just went ahead and picked the Tuesday price. So we're going through and even really fine tuning it like that. Really excited for the class this week. It'll be Thursday at eight o'clock live in the dojo. If you're one of our customers, you just have to go right in there. You'll get an email ahead of time to let you come on into it. Uh, also, we're playing a game called the, close <laughs> call it, uh, the Guess the Dow. So bottom right hand corner of your page is that you can just guess where you think the Dow is going to close. Last week I said the wrong number. I said our winner guess 2415957 as far as the Dow's closing price is 27. <laughs> so 2715.57 was our winner's guess. Gift cards are already out on the way. If you happen to guess uh, the closest without going over, we'll send you a $100 gift card. And if you're one of our customers, we'll send you $100 uh, in your account if you like. Or you can have the gift card too. That's up to you. Depends on what you uh, what you like there. So that's all I have as far as marketing goes here today. Let's dive into the markets. You got a lower day, 142 in the Dow, lower. Uh, S&P lost about 10, and the Nasdaq 23 points lower on the day. Oil was the big focus. Uh, what I don't have up there is the Russell. The old Russell, man. Russell kicked in there and did really well. But anyways, we'll cover that in a second. Uh, oil. we got the price of oil spiking today. We'll cover that as well. The concern is that consumers may not be able to handle the higher prices of oil if this continues and that could further weaken the overall economy. Uh, here's the thing, though, and I'm going to just try to pull it up. I showed this on Friday. This is nothing new to you guys. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, there you go. This is uh, our U.S. crude oil production versus OPEC's crude oil production. The purple line is OPEC. You can see their production sort of leveled off. They've even sort of focused on cutting production lately, and the U.S. is full friggin' steam ahead. We are producing a ton of oil, which means, hey, we don't have as much of a, a reliance on that oil as we once did. And so uh, I think that's part of the reason you saw the markets hold up today. All in all, the markets held up pretty good. If you look at the well, if you look at the S and P 500, just a small down day after having a string of up weeks into the prior highs, which is where you see the lines there. So a little bit of a pullback today. I actually thought the markets held up better than they probably could have. Maybe some of that has to do with the Fed coming up on Wednesday. That's that's the big deal. The Fed rate decision on uh, Wednesday afternoon. We'll cover that, of course. Uh, and so you had the markets just a little bit lower. Here's the Nasdaq, a touch lower, just off highs. The Dow. A little bit lower on the day, but all in all, really not that big of a deal. Like I said, oil was the big focus. It ended up finishing the day higher uh, by about 14 percent. It's since pulled back just a little bit since, uh, from there, but uh, very clearly now making its decision which way it wants to go. Uh, so what happened if you didn't get a chance to uh, check that out? Uh, there was some strikes over the weekend. They call them drone strikes, but they're actually missiles uh, that um, hit Saudi Arabia's two most uh, sort of productive wells. And uh, so all in all, it totals about uh, just under 7% of the world's uh, oil supply that's being produced out of those areas there. And uh, I believe one of them, they said they'll already have up and running and no problem, but the other one is gonna take a couple weeks to get back up to, up to speed there. Uh, the Houthi rebels out of Yemen claimed responsibility. And uh, so a lot of people were pointing the finger at Iran, but however, despite what you see in the news, those guys actually claimed responsibility for it. Uh, they are, supported by Iran, but they are completely separate. If you, I, I don't know if you care about like global history and things like that. Is that, to me, that just seems like you guys would like gloss over and be done with it, but we can cover it if you like. Um, 
Anyway, so market's barely budging, not all that big of a deal. When the price of crude oil opened last night, let's go back to the charts there, it gapped higher by 10%. You can actually see it on the charts there. By the way, if you're not sure what these candlesticks mean and you're one of our customers, go on into the dojo and sort by, um, well, you could just search candlesticks classes. There's three of them in there that cover the basics of what all of these mean and how to kind of put that language together, if you will. Uh, so price of oil higher, and that really helped everything that was related to oil that's really been kind of weak. If you're looking at an oil ETF like you USO, that's a direct participation, as direct as you can get ETF-wise, uh, to the price of oil. So that looks very, very similar there. Um, some of the other names that really needed help, like XOP, really coming up off the lows. Uh, seasonally, it also does the same thing. So the stats were sort of on your side with that. But nonetheless, we'll take a little bit of news there. Uh, you got XOP higher. Oil service stocks, those also coming up off lows. Uh, looking really good. Energy, or the XLE, if you follow that, it's back above the 200-day moving average for the first time in almost a year. It's about 11 months that uh, it has been below the 200-day moving average, and it closed above that, too, so people will like to see that for sure. Um, and if you dig into some of the individual names inside that space, uh, especially in the S&P, you're going to have Apache added about 17% on the day back to the 200-day moving average. Marathon Oil, one of the better performers. You just you could go through all of them, really. Hess Corporation breaking out of a little bit of a sloppy kind of a range there. Helmerich Payne, we pointed out the other day, uh, kind of bouncing up off the lows. That one did well. Isn't it kind of interesting? Do you, do you, remember, we, we started talking about this last week, that energy stocks were already coming up off their lows. Oil was already starting to show strength. You had oil services and things like that already starting to move higher. Isn't that kind of weird that they started moving just before there was some interesting strikes there? I'm not a conspiracy guy, but how in the world all of a sudden, last week people put, what? I don't know. I'm not going to go there. Anyways, that's what you have going on uh, in the oil space there. Now, you want to look around and say, well, okay, what, what does this mean for different areas of the market? So, Oh, let me go back to the chart. Sorry about that. Uh, you want to look at some of the leaders. Like in the Dow, you had uh, Chevron. Uh, CVX is the symbol, 2% higher on the day. Of course, Exxon Mobil is a Dow stock there. Better performer in the Dow, 1.5% uh, on the day. You look around, you got airlines getting hit hard. Uh, American Airlines already sort of struggling there, down 7% on the day. United Airlines, one of the other ones that was lower on the day, about 3%. Uh, lower. Transports lower because they include some of the bigger airlines like United Airlines makes up about 5% of the IYT which is Transportation Index uh, ETF if you want to follow along with that one. Uh, and so, you know, they got hit a little bit. Look over to things like aerospace and defense. The idea is that, well, with Trump on TV saying we're locked and loaded, those were his words. You don't, you know, you use the word locked and loaded when you're ready to fight. And I appreciate the strong language coming out of the president, but, you know, that sort of meant, okay, like we're going to shoot something. We're going to retaliate against Iran, right? And so uh, for me, that's kind of what I interpreted that to be. So defense stocks were a little bit higher on the day, looking around at that. He later came out and said, no, 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 I, I didn't mean that. I, I didn't mean that. So very typical of the White House to say one thing and change their mind on the other thing there. But uh, so nonetheless, you had defense stocks higher on the day. Lockheed Martin, I believe, hit new 52-week highs it did. Yep. Hit new 52 week highs. So that area of the market doing well. Uh, retailers got hit a little bit today. I'll use the XRT to share the ETF with you. Retailers were lower, right? Because higher shipping costs. We're just concerned with higher prices of oil equals higher shipping costs. And therefore it may bleed into the consumer's pocket. Can the consumer handle that if the economy is already starting to get a little bit weaker? Uh, consumer news that we've been going over, the, the econ news shows that we're not afraid to rack up debt, but we are slowing down our spending just a little bit um, that we've been We've been covering up that over the last couple of weeks. So if you look through retail space a little bit lower, even Amazon, oops, there you go. Even Amazon a little bit lower on the day. Uh, they also had some news out of North or South Carolina that may affect how much they paid there. So it was a little bit of underlying news. Uh, but anyways, you have that sort of thing. Now, with the concerns that we may retaliate and things, it makes you want to go look at gold and silver. So silver recovering almost everything it lost on Friday. Remember, Friday was a pretty nasty day for the price of silver. Almost recovered all of it. Gold did recover all of Friday's decline. Actually, it closed a little bit lower. Uh, so we have to say the same thing there. It basically recovered all of Friday's declines. The defensive areas, people going into that saying, well, I'm not sure. Are we going to start fighting here? Is there going to be some back and forth? We don't know. Are we going to help support allies? Are we going to stand on the sidelines? What are we going to do? So a little bit more defensive play going on there. Uh, if you want to look a little bit further, we'll go into the price of going to bonds. 
Bonds actually started to recover a little bit. They've been sort of decimated over the last couple of days. And I find it interesting when uh, bond yields were moving higher, everybody's uh, moving lower over here. So price is moving higher and bond yields were moving lower. Everybody's going, oh no, inversion. Something's wrong. Something's going to go on here. When bond prices start pulling back and yields start going back up, everybody goes, that's too fast. Why are bond yields moving up so fast? And we're freaking out there. Now today yields start heading back lower and now with inversion. All of a sudden on Bloomberg, they're talking about inversions again. It's like nobody's happy one way or the other with these things. Nonetheless, uh, people going into some of that safety play there. So you got the um, yields a little bit lower on the day. Hope that helps you there. Uh, we'll go through a couple stocks here in the news. Uber and Lyft were in the news. You know what I didn't cover? I'm going to go back and hit this real quick. Uh, last week, you had consumer staples uh, lower on the week. You had uh, utilities lower on the week. Your biggest movers were in financials. XLF you can use to see kind of that rally in financials as yields were moving higher. Um, the materials index was also higher. Industrials were higher on the week. And energy, of course, we already talked about that. So I just, just want to cover that. Uh, bond prices lower and um, copper was the best performer to the upside commodity-wise. Okay, that's all. Just wanted to cover that. Uh, Uber and Lyft were a little bit higher on the day, just a little bit. So what happened there, you had, um, okay, there you go. So you had Uber and Lyft a little bit higher. You had an analyst come out, and um, this was a tricky one. I debated even putting this one in here. Um, they upgraded, uh, HSBC upgraded both Uber and Lyft. However, they cut their price targets. So they said, we are optimistic on Uber and Lyft, but they put $62 price target on Lyft. Yeah. Was it 62 on Lyft? Because that seems a little high. Yeah, 62 on Lyft. Yeah, sure enough. So a uh, $62 price target on Lyft down from like 67 and 44 on the price of Uber. Uh, so you're kind of like, all right, well, what's the deal with that? Well, when you look into this analyst, it's a brand new analyst. They have eight total calls. So the fact that they did two today, right, that's two more. So that was they had six prior to today. Now they have eight. So they're trying to get some, you can get it. They're, they're trying to get some calls out there. Um, not bad so far, 50% profitable. Four of the eight are profitable uh, with a 5% average gain there. So those were a little bit higher. They think they, uh, this analyst sees uh, improvements in both of the companies there in their, both of their offerings and the optionality and everything. A lot of uh, analysts talk there. Bottom line, they think that uh, they're moving to 62 on Lyft and 44 on Uber. Uh, Boeing was in the news today. A little bit uh, lower, actually, by the time it finished the day. It's had a great run lately, so it kind of took a break today. The chief, the head chief, the, <laughs> the FAA, the guy that leads the FAA, I don't know what they call him, the FAA chief, the uh, director, if you will, um, he's going to test the 737 MAX software in a simulator. He's going to go right in there and get it done. There were some comments about uh, over in the UAE that they, they're, look, we're not in any hurry. We're not going to look to approve this thing. It's probably going to be in the next year before the 737 can be back into service. So you had some conflicting news there. It was a potential for a good day, but overseas they shot it back down. General Motors is going to be lower on the day by four and a quarter percent. The uh, auto workers union approved a strike, so uh, they, they've officially walked out. First walkout since 2007, I believe. So uh, GM stock price a little bit lower on the day. Uh, they just they can't agree on a contract there, so that's the end of that. Uh, in Apple, uh, Disney's Bob Iger. Uh, he has left the board of Apple, and at first, over the weekend, it was like, oh, no, what's going on? But if you think about it, you know, Disney's doing their own streaming service. Apple just announced their own streaming service. There's a conflict there, and Bob Iger basically just said, I got I to gotta step back. I, I can't be on the board of one when I'm helping the other. So uh, just probably a natural evolution there. I don't think there's anything more to read into that. Uh, Square a little bit higher today, and I believe PayPal was in on the mix because they were in on the news. PayPal was a little bit lower. Uh, a study by Accenture said that... Uh, Square, PayPal, and other, uh, other payment firms are likely to grab as much as $280 billion in revenue from banks by 2025. So it's this whole idea that you can get your day-to-day -day business transactions, personal spending transactions done using an app, not a bank. Uh, Accenture is basically saying that's taken over, and I would agree with that. Uh, that's, that's definitely something that's picking up. You see the high interest savings accounts out there. All right, as far as the S&P 500, 69% of them still, well, we finished Friday, 69% above the 50-day moving average. Uh, and so even though the markets were lower today, we didn't lose anything. You know why? Because I went and looked through all of this. You have names like Helmrich Payne. They, in the oil space, back above the 50-day for the first time there. So that gets a new S&P name above the 50-day moving average. Marathon Oil, above the 50-day, right? New S&P name above the 50-day moving average. Halliburton, there's another one. Uh, 
Well, you got a bunch of them. I'll just go through a few more. EOG resources above the 50 day, Occidental Petroleum above the 50 day. So that's why the list didn't really decline today. You would think with a market decline, it would. You have five new 52 week highs today. I mentioned one of them already, Lockheed Martin. Uh, you got Booking Holdings, BKNG is a symbol if you want to check that one out. Kansas City Southern is a transportation stock because of the oil prices being higher. Transportation stocks got a little bit of a bid there. So that's KSU. Uh, I'm sorry, rail stocks got a little bit of a bid. And Cisco. Not Cisco, the tech company, Cisco, the food company, new 52-week highs. We happen to own all of them. Lucky us uh, here at Jazz. There's one new low, <laughs> right? So Altria is the new low, and to be fair, we own that one as well. They just paid out 84 cents in dividends, but that doesn't really help. Uh, so we do own that stock as well. I, I don't, I don't want to be the guy that's always like, yay, we own this stock, and look how high it's going. So uh, not going to be that guy. We own that one a little bit in our dividend fund, uh, and uh, I believe in our Staples fund, actually, as well. Okay, what else do we have here? A couple more things, and I'll take your questions. Can I go back to the charts real quick? Uh, Republic Services Group. No, can't go back to the charts. Little guy just popped off on me. Uh, so we've been covering the stats on Republic Services. That's a waste management company. Not waste management, but it is in the trash collecting service. Um, we had the stats that over the next five days, this was three days ago, that it should uh, average bounce of 1.81%. It got as high as 1.76%, but we said, you know what, let's not count it. Let's just see what happens there. So we're back to flat. I drew a line on the chart there, which I'm hoping to show you in just a second to show it is three days in and we have yet to achieve that goal. Uh, there you go. So there's the line. We'll keep following up with it for the next two days, but so far it's basically around flat. I know someone was asking about Sienna and I said I would follow up with that one as it bounces. There you go. Today's your bounce on Sienna, three and a half percent off the 200 day moving average. Just a nice normal pullback there that nobody was scared of. No big deals there. Uh, so we'll move on from that one. If we could now that that's moving in the right direction for you. I forget who asked about that. I just remember I said I would follow through with it for you. I'm happy to have done that. Well, I wish you the best. Hope that continues moving higher. Uh, Netflix in the news, they won the rights to Seinfeld. I hope they didn't pay a lot. I didn't see how much they paid if they even announced that, but Se Seinfeld, this is like 20 years ago. Is it that important? Is there still that many people watching Seinfeld? I find it funny, my daughter, she's 18, she watches Friends at night. Same thing, I'm like, why? Don't you have another show you wanna watch? Uh, and Aurora Cannabis downgraded today. It's Stiefel Nicholas. I saved the note because they, they said quite a bit about this one. Aurora Cannabis, they believe that the financing efforts will be challenged against the backdrop of the over overwhelmingly negative investor sentiment towards the sector, damaged credibility, and implied catalyst near term dri to drive enthusiasm for the shares. That's what analysts write. And it's my job to read through that every day and go, what is he saying? Because <laughs> I don't like to come on here and read this stuff off to you. Who likes to hear that? So the stock was lower today, headed back towards 52 week lows. Basically, they were saying, we see what's going on out there. Look how quickly you can take over something like uh, this whole vaping thing can take over the world, which I'm not like a vaping guy. I don't care. Do whatever you want. But don't you think we should focus on something else like, OK, cigarettes? Don't they kill just a few more people than vaping? What have we lost? Four people are vaping? Now, I got a little background in this one because uh, of my wife's profession, and so I get to see what some of these pulmonologists are going through. They are hoping to God that they allow people to continue to vape because of this, something called a cold lung and everything that they're experiencing with these kids that are vaping. So no doubt it's bad for you. Uh, you should not be inhaling moisture, whether it's flavored or not. That's Your lungs aren't supposed to do that. Uh, but... Nonetheless, uh, the argument from the analyst was, you see how quickly that you can turn against an area. They're concerned about that as well as some of the financing issues that they have uh, there at Aurora Cannabis. They just reported earnings, by the way, and uh, sort of disappointed a little bit in that one as well. All right, moving on here. I'm sure you all have an opinion on vaping. I'm not, I don't like this to be an opinion show, really, so I'll move on. Uh, Barron says, Tapestry uh, is a great opportunity here, and they love the dividend yield. So they're finally getting around to what we've been talking about. 5.36% dividend yield, by the way. So if you're willing to scoop the bottom or trying to be a part of a bottom of something, 5.36% on that one. Uh, United Airlines, prior to today, so this is over the weekend, Barron's came out and said uh, they like this valuation at this price, and the high short interest is, is appealing to them. Um, and U-Haul company said, or Barron's actually said on U-Haul, I wrote this down because this was interesting. They don't normally go outside the box like this, but Barron said U-Haul is, quote, crazy cheap here. Okay. 
<laughs> Does that help you? All right, so uh, what else do we have? Uh, CBRL, that's uh, Cracker Barrel. They report earnings tomorrow morning, 2.49 a share expected. Adobe reports tomorrow and FedEx reports tomorrow. You got some adjustments in the S&P 400, S&P 600, uh, S&P 500. That was last week and all done there. So I think we can move on to questions. We did it. We did it, we did it. I'm gonna close this out and see what I can do to help answer your questions. Your portfolio saved a little bit by the high price of oil and all the energy stuff. Awesome. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. You think red, I'm um, sorry, uh, restoration hardware running out of steam there. Impressive, right, with their earnings. I just think that is so impressive how they keep saying we're raising prices. Whew. I mean, don't they already have pretty high prices? That place is expensive. Um, mm hmm <laughs> Mary says, yeah, that's a little bit weird. Oil prices going up just ahead of a, a strike there. I know, that's kind of interesting there. Uh, why doesn't Netflix add a service similar to YouTube for user-generated content? Watch more YouTube than anything else. Interesting idea. I don't know if they thought about that. My biggest complaint with Netflix is when they do their conference call, the CEO uses like a 1996 flip phone camera to deliver his conference call. How does a video streaming service not have the most beautiful, crisp, conference call ever. I, I just I don't get that. Do we think the Fed's going to cut rates? They, uh, almost everybody is expecting the Fed to cut rates by a quarter of a, point, a point on Wednesday afternoon. We'll cover it. We'll see what happens there. I, I just, uh, my opinion, I don't think they should or have to, uh, but they know more than I do. You know what I mean? They see more than I do. <laughs> um, Mary on the locked and loaded comments. Yeah, I'm sure he said that and somebody whispered in his ear later. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. <clears throat> Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sure he has a few of those people around. If I were the president, I would want those people. I'd have a finance person. I would want to have like a uh, pop culture person around me. Just uh, you can't possibly know everything. I'd want someone to say, "Don't don't say that." Don't say that. <laughs> Just giving you the stats on that. If you say that, your polling numbers go down 2%. Yeah. Uh, mean reversion, Ashish. So Ashish is asking, uh, any stats on the oil movement over the next few days uh, based on today's movement? Uh, historically, mean reversion, especially when the price of oil gaps higher uh, off lows like it sort of is, right? It's not near highs or anything like that. When it gaps higher off of lows, there's typically a little bit of selling pressure in the short term that goes into that. Uh, we did look at that. I didn't get a chance to include the stats. Maybe I can put it in here tomorrow for you. Um, Matthew, do you think we'll see negative interest rates in the U.S. anytime soon? Sure seems like it. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, what could they say to justify a rate cut? You know, I, I don't know, I, to be honest. I, I don't know how they justify it with all the economic data that's coming out showing real strength here. Their main argument could be inflation. Maybe that's something that they're focused on. Uh, if you happen to see the manufacturer's index today, that was sort of hinting at higher inflation in the future. So even if they use today's data, they can't really use the inflation number. I, we'll see. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Robert's saying, would it kill me if I paid off my Roth now for the year? You mean max it out for the year? No, I don't think so. I, I, I am tempted to wait for that pullback because you have September is historically a rather rough month. Uh, but so far, it's been pretty good. I, I don't I don't know. Remember, you don't have to do it by the end of the year. So if you're one of those people that says, I'm just putting a little money in every week, just waiting for some reason to put a little more in, you have plenty of time because you have up until tax day of next year as well. Yep. Um, the Saudi IPO. Yeah, they're still plowing ahead with that, by the way. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, cool. Uh <laughs> Sweet. So we covered Aurora Cannabis there. That helps you with your cannabis stock update for the day. And did I happen to get your... Nobody talks about Bitcoin anymore. That's not fair. Everybody was so excited. It's still hovering around $10,000, 10, uh, but it's pretty quiet in there. I guess that's why nobody's talking about it. Kind of like the FANG names. They didn't really... Where'd they go? They're not really getting any attention there either. Anyways, uh, by the way, uh, your uh, other... Things affected by oil. Carnival Cruise Line. That was lower on the day uh, as well. Uh, do you think Crown Castle will move past its 52-week high anytime soon? It's an uphill battle. You got a lot of people taking profits in there. I, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, if that's uh, your question. Above 149 in the short term? 
If I had to guess, I would say no. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I think I've done our part here today. Sorry if I missed your questions. By the way, I realize there's like a 15 second delay here. So if you happen to ask a question while the credits are rolling, it's not that I missed you. It's, you know, it, it takes time for these things to load up. I wish there was a way to get this thing moving faster, but sadly there is not. Well, uh, back to work for me. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow to do this all over again. And Wednesday, the big Fed day, we'll be covering that, see what they decide. And I uh, hope you'll join us for that. Enjoy, we'll see you soon. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new FinTips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, cause we know time is money. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.